Hey everyone, how's it going? I hope you're all doing great and following the three H's of the channel. And in this video, a three foot tall entity is encountered on a camping trip. A dog with black eyes. A story from Chile. A man who says he trades with Dog Man. And a camping trip gone horribly wrong in the Pacific Northwest. If this sounds like something you're interested in, pull up a stump and let's jump into it. Thank you for watching. So this may not be as long as some of the other ones, but for me, it was equally as scary. It happened when I was 14. I was on a camping trip for a week with my school. We were pretty far in the woods. We were camping near a small lake that I can't remember the name of. The first three nights of this camping trip were perfectly fine. Nothing happened. They were fun. On the fourth night, though, we played a game called 4040 In. And since it was at night, we were playing with a flashlight. And if you don't know what 4040 in is, basically, one kid is it, the rest are hiders. The hiders have the count to 40, and then after that, the person who's it will turn around with a flashlight and say, 4040. And then, the person who's it has to try and spy you with the flashlight. And if they do, you're caught. The objective is for the hiders to get back to a certain base or a checkpoint. But anyway, that's enough explanation of that. I had the amazing idea of lying down next to a bush to begin. The game starts, and people start creeping up to the goal, making noise occasionally. I hear rustling from the bush that I'm next to. I think it's one of my friends. Until I see feathers, I slowly back away from the bush and then this thing walks out of the bush, stops for a moment, and sprints off. It was three feet tall, it was gray, and it looked somewhat like a dog on its hind legs. I think, screw that. I run back to camp as fast as I can, right past the checkpoint and I go straight to bed. The next day, when it's daylight, I decide to investigate. I walk over to where I saw it to have a look. It wasn't super far from the camp, and I find out what made it run off so suddenly. The thing, whatever it was, must have killed a duck, because there was a duck with its wings ripped off and large chunks missing from the body with bite marks with strange amounts of teeth. I threw up, I went back to camp, and never mentioned it to anybody. I just wanted to let it go. So before I begin, I would like to let everybody know that English is not my first language and I don't speak it that well. So I've kind of translated this from Google. So I hope it all makes sense. In 2010, I was around 10 or 11 years old. I got to my grandma's big ass fully made out of wood, old as hell house. This was pretty much deep in the woods in Chile, South America. It was a region of B.O.B.O. Bio. And on the off chance that you've ever been in the area, it's near a little town called Ranquil. I was there with my family. The house is located in the middle of a hill, so there's a staircase to go up and down it that's in the hill. So while we're there, we do regular family stuff. We eat empanadas, we play board games, card games, just a normal day. Eventually, night falls and it's time to go to sleep. The garden is outside my room. I wake up in the middle of the night, out of a dead sleep. There's a noise outside. It sounds at first like a very big animal out in the garden. It's breathing heavily, and it seems to be throwing the benches in the garden to the floor, almost like it had stumbled upon them. My parents and uncle happen to hear it too. They decide to go investigate. My dad grabs a stick and a flashlight and goes outside, basically in his underwear, with my uncle and Cairn Terrier dogs. This, quote, animal seems to be up on the staircase. Everything is dark as hell outside, even with a flashlight. The flashlights seem almost unable to penetrate the darkness. The dogs lose control and run like barking lightning up the staircase. They come back after a short while, running faster than before and both of them 
are now howling in fear. Suddenly, Grandpa appears out of nowhere and goes up the staircase with a flashlight and a double barrel shotgun that I've never seen before. We follow him up the stairs. Grandpa is yelling in Spanish, Who the F's there? Who's out there? Nobody answers, but instead, a heavy breathing intensifies, and this pair of yellow eyes appear, illuminated by the flashlights. But the weird part is, our flashlights could only see what the eyes were. They couldn't penetrate the darkness enough to see the shape of its body. Grandpa very sternly tells everyone to go back inside and try to go to sleep. Of course, nobody wants to, but we obey. We go back in the house, and we go back to our beds. The rest of the night, we hear these weird noises outside. But, besides that, it never happened again. My grandpa said one time what he thought it was, but I don't remember the name of it. It was so long ago. But other than that, the family is really weird about talking about that night. Back when I was 13, I had something really weird and strange happen. One night, I was watching TV on my laptop like usual, and then I heard this crazy screaming noise. It kind of sounded like that sound you sort of make when you inhale and make noise, but more of a scream kind of thing. I go over and I lock my bedroom door, but then I realize I'm home alone. The noise repeats, even louder. I grab the biggest knife that I have. I used to be a boy scout, so it was a pretty big knife. I creak open the door, and I peek around the corner and down the stairs. I see this thing. It looks like a huddled up dog at the other door. I had an awesome six-year-old black Labrador. I call its name. I hear the click, click, click behind me, dog paused on a hardwood floor. Then I look beside me and see that my dog is standing next to me. I realize that whatever this thing is was definitely not my dog doing some weird pose. Once the realization sets in, I basically shit a brick, and then I look slowly down the stairs again. This thing perks up and looks at me. There's no eyes, just black holes. It stands up and has these super tall, spindly legs, almost bone-like. It starts walking toward me, not making a single sound when its paws hit the floor. I turn and run to my room and lock the door. In the commotion, I realize that I left my dog out there. I hear my dog barking over and over again, about 40 times. And suddenly, the thing is gone. I never saw or heard that thing again. I don't know what the hell it was, but those eyes burrow into my soul. So in late December of 2015, I was hunting on my own property, and at this time, life in general was going pretty good. But that day, I saw no other deer, and it was starting to get dark. My stand is about one to one and a half miles from my house. It was just about completely dark when I got home, and I hear something rustling by my feed shed. I'm a rancher, I raise cows, miniature donkeys, chickens and turkeys. I think, whatever, it's probably a raccoon. I pull up my 9mm to creep along the side of the shed. But then, it's not a raccoon. I see this thing, about 7 to 7.5 seven feet tall, standing up and scooping rice bran into its mouth. Its hair is matted and gray. Its head, though, is somewhat groomed. I think my 9mm is not going to cut it. I move back to a hundred yards and take aim. And then I notice my two English mastiffs aren't barking at it. In fact, they seem to be cowering under my house. I think this is weird because they've killed coyotes no problem before. So I take a shot. I hit dead center. The thing lurches forward like something sucker punched it. And it lets out this scream that sounded like a rabbit death scream but deeper 
and more gravelly. It takes off into the night at an ungodly speed into the woods. Ever since then, I had happenings around my house. Scratches around the door, big branches broken off trees on the quietest of nights, dead chickens in the yard. And over time, I've learned some things, that these things are probably dogmen, and that they seem to be intelligent. At one point, they put a line of sticks between my land and theirs. I treated it like a property line, but after a month, they were still screwing with me. I asked some people I know who were kind of into the same things, and they suggested to try giving them a gift, like meat or something else. So I did, and since then, something crazy has happened. It's been like a regular trade that's been pretty much equal. If I give a squirrel, they match it with a rabbit or something similar. One time, I gave them a whole smoked hog and I got half of a buck in return. So after this trade was established, the sticks on our property line have been discarded, except for a few. The few that I'm talking about, instead of going in a line, they seem to have like a path in between, almost like a door that we can share to visit each other. I take this to mean, treat our land with respect and we'll treat yours with respect. And in this time, Nothing else weird has happened. Every now and then we trade, and that's about it. We just try to stay out of each other's way. In the early 2010s, I was living in the Pacific Northwest. It was very beautiful there, tons of nature. I loved it, but unfortunately my career and work eventually took me elsewhere. But. This is something weird that took place during the time that I lived there. It was August 2011. My buddy from work's brother is in town. He knows that I love camping, and he invites me to go along with his wife and brother. It's a holiday on that following Monday, so we have three days. We leave really early Saturday morning. Where we were going was about an hour northeast of Seattle, not too far from civilization but generally completely isolated in a huge national forest. So we arrived when the sun has just about risen, plenty of time to get set up. I was an Eagle Scout as a teenager, so I'm totally in my element. I get the site cleared and the tent set up. There's three of them. Around noon, I start a fire. It's not cold, but we just kind of want that maximum coziness level, you know. So we're hanging out around the fire, just talking. My buddy and his wife are a little ways out, looking for wood and skipping stones or something by a pond that's about a hundred yards away. The day goes on fine. I go and see if we can catch some fish for dinner. I didn't have any luck, but we brought food anyway. So we eat. The night winds down. My buddy's brother heads in to sleep early, so it's the three of us by the fire. I head out for a night walk while he and his wife stay by the fire, kind of give them some alone time, you know. I head down to the pond where my buddy and his wife were earlier, and it was the place that I tried fishing, and I look up at the stars. It's absolutely beautiful. I was taking in the scenery, kind of just surveying the surrounding tree line, not looking at anything in particular. I was just getting my bearings out of habit, I guess. Then I notice a glow of a fire through the tree line on the other side of the lake to the left. I didn't notice or see any activity while I was fishing earlier, so I assumed that these people got in way later than us. I make a mental note that we have company, not out of fear or worry. It's just good to know that there are other people out here. I make my way along the pond to the right, so opposite the fire that I've just noticed. I was taking my time, thinking about life and work and all that boring stuff. I look back to our campsite. Buddy and his wife aren't around the fire, so I figured they've gone to sleep. I look back at the fire past the tree line, and I notice someone standing at the edge of the pond like I am. I give him a wave as he's a fellow nightwalk connoisseur, 
It's hard to tell exactly, but he holds up both hands, stretching his fingers out like he's making sure that he has ten fingers. And I think, alright, that's weird, but who really gives a shit? People are weird. I make my way back to camp. I can hear Buddy and his wife talking in their tent, so I say goodnight and go to bed. I wake up later than I would have liked the next morning. Buddy's brother already made breakfast, so I eat. I decide to go pay a visit to Mr. Ten Fingers and whoever else he's camping with to say hello and see if any of them want to join me in fishing. I head over to where I saw the fire. I'm greeted by a girl who looks like she's in her late teens. The girl looks disheveled and kind of dirty, probably been out here drinking and maybe got a little rough last night. Hello, she says. Hey there, I saw a friend of yours last night. You guys must have got in after the sunset, I say. She says, oh no, we've been out here for a while. I say, well right on. Anyway, listen, I was going to go have another go at catching some lunch. I didn't have much luck yesterday. I was wondering if any of you want to come along. And she said, I don't think so. We've got plenty to eat with us. By this point, her responses were kind of weird in tone. But I said, that's alright. If you or anybody else changes their mind, you know where to find me. And I laughed. And she very flatly said, we do. Well, this sounded weird, as you can imagine. But I assumed that she could be hung over. So I take off and go back to our camp. I grab my pole and my bag from my tent. My buddy says, oh, making friends? I say, oh, you know me. I figured I could find someone who actually knows how to fish, and I laughed. I head down to the pond. I spend two hours and I catch a few fish, and I head back to camp to cook them for lunch. After eating lunch, the day continues to go on, and eventually, we eat dinner. We all have some drinks, and we head to our tents to sleep. In the middle of the night, I hear some rustling outside of my tent, at the edge of our camp to my right. I figured that it was someone just out taking a piss. I hear rustling to my left again. I'm kind of spooked now since I wasn't expecting another source of sound, but I think it could just be a little animal running along doing whatever animal stuff it wants to do. Then I hear something else faint whispers from two voices to my right. The rustling is still coming from the left. That's nobody from our campsite. I lay still and try to make out what the voices are whispering about. I hear things like, how many, and then mumbling, and then I hear three or four. I think the one and that one came by and talked to her earlier. I hear more mumbling. I tilt my head up and backwards, so I'm effectively looking behind me toward the middle of our campsite. There's a figure in front of the dying fire. It's shuffling around, and it looks like it's just standing there, watching my tent. I think, this is weird. F this. It moves closer to my tent. I hear something brush and bend the wall of my tent. I'm holding my breath at this point, both out of fear and just wanting to stay quiet. I hear even more mumbling from whoever is out there. The one near my tent eventually walks away, and I hear the others leave with him. I keep my eyes peeled, looking for a shadow, something, anything, and listen for another half an hour. Eventually, I fall back asleep. I remember what happened the second I opened my eyes. I get out of my tent up before anyone else. There's two handprints on the side of my tent. They're not bloody or anything, but they have this dark green stuff. It's like mashed up leaves and dirt that form a paste. As you can guess, I was thoroughly freaked out by this point. First the weird hand gesture from the guy at the lake, and now some cryptic handprints on my tent. The others eventually get up while I'm sitting by a fresh fire. I'm drinking coffee and staring at the prince. One of them says, Morning. I was thinking that we pack up and try to leave by sunset. They notice my gaze 
and they follow where I'm looking. He just says, what the F is that? I say, you tell me. The four of us ponder on it. I assume it was the girl and her friends that I was talking to the day prior. But his brother says, let's go tell them to leave us the F alone. But his wife chimes in, we're leaving today, who cares? They're just some drunk kids. I say, either way, it's not very neighborly to wander into someone else's camp in the middle of the night. But his brother chimes in. Let's just tell them it wasn't cool. Maybe they'll learn a lesson, and then maybe they can go back to drinking, and then we can just move on. I start the walk over there. It's only ten minutes from our site. I pat my pocket to double check for my knife. We're all ready to give them a stern talking to. Eventually, the four of us are standing around, looking for them. We notice their fire pit, surrounded by stones. They've been here for much, much longer than us. Multiple tents, with absolutely zero activity. I say, hey, is there anyone around? And there's still nothing. I walk a bit further past their tents to see if they're hanging out in the woods. There's nobody there. I head down to the pond. Maybe they're swimming. There's nobody at the pond either. I figure, well, whatever. Buddy's wife was right. We're leaving later anyway, so who cares? Punk kids will forever be punk kids. I head back to our camp along the edge of the pond. And then my buddy says, who's that? And points across the pond to our left, so directly across from where the kids are camping and to the right of our campsite. It's two guys. One looks to be late teens like the girl. The other is our age, early 30s. The four of us are just standing there, looking at them. They both do the weird hand thing, like they have a gun pointed at them, and they're surrendering with their hands up. You get the idea. I say, what the F? My buddy's wife, is that them? I said, how the hell should I know? I only talk to the girl. Both guys turn around and head up the tree line. There's a general uneasiness between the four of us. My buddy says, let's just pack up and get the F out of here. We pick up our pace, only a few minutes to our camp. At our camp, all of our stuff is tossed. The tents are trashed. The food and dishes are scattered all over the ground. Our clothes are thrown on branches. The windshield of my buddy's car has a nice crack in it, but somehow not shattered. My buddy says we should get the hell out of here now. We grab what we can. We leave the trash tents and food. I broke a major scout rule there. We throw our shit into the trunk, get in, and head out. We're driving along the dirt path to the access road. My buddy's wife is freaking out at this point. I can't blame her, but it's not like any of us got hurt. Once we're really close to the access road, I look out the window. Something catches my eye. It's the same girl that I talked to, and another guy that I haven't seen yet, are standing in the trees watching us leave. I don't want to further spook anyone, so I keep my mouth shut, but I remember my eyes going wide. The girl waves and then does the hand thing. The guy she's with just pushes her arms down like she shouldn't do that. We make it to the access road and eventually the highway. We head back to the city and that's pretty much it. There's no major ending. Maybe it was just some kids screwing around, but... I really think it was something weirder. A few months after it happened, I was thinking about the way the girl was talking, having plenty of food, being out there a while, and knowing where to find me. Everything is really freaky. I have no idea what was up with the hand things either, like it was some kind of calling card. Anyway, thankfully, I don't live anywhere near a forest. I'm not too keen on camping anymore and I haven't been since. So what did you think of those encounters? If one stuck out to you, let me know which one it was down in the comments. If you have one of your own, I have an email in the description that you can send them to if you'd like to. Also down there is a PayPal and a Patreon if you would like to donate to the channel that way. 
and of course, super thanks here on YouTube. And just liking the video, commenting, and all that stuff is really good for the channel too. If you liked the video, then please subscribe. And in a video soon, I'll talk about something weird that I encountered with friends. Not in the woods, but at the beach. But until then, thank you for watching, thank you for pulling up a stump, and I'll catch you in the next one. Have a good week.